I've had way too much caffeine today, so y'all are going to have to buckle up. But I'm excited for tonight. And uh, tonight we're starting a brand new series uh, called Be A Light. Say Be Be. A A. Light. That's right. Be A Light. So we're going to be jumping into that. And we really jumped into it a little bit last week as well. But tonight we're going to be looking at, okay, well, who is the light? And I want to ask you, who is the light? The light. Now, if I were to ask you that, who would you say? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, you already know it. I'll see y'all next week. I hope y'all have a good night. So, no, but but it's like, okay, okay, cool. But who is the light? Like, what does it really mean? And what do you mean by being a light? Like, who is it? How how do I become it? And we're going to be diving into it throughout this whole series. You do not want to miss it. But with light, there's also... The absence of light, which is called dark, right? So how many of y'all like the dark? Raise your hand. I'm just curious. Heck no. That, my man, is that you, Brayden? Heck no. That's my boy. I get scared too, bro. Like, I, I know you have a nightlight. Me too. That's my man right there. But it's like, no, I don't like the dark. But some of y'all, like, let's be real. You like the dark, right? I saw some hands go up. I like sleeping, like, in the dark. Like, I like a dark room. I like, like, a dark, cold room. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to wake up and be like, I don't know if I'm sick. Or if it was just that cold in my room, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like it that cold. But that's just me. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah. But see, the reality is this. I'm afraid, though, as much as I'm afraid of darkness, especially, like, in haunted houses or if, like, I'm in a place that I don't know or it's late at night and there's no street lights out and it's like, I got to run outside and get my backpack. (sighs) I know there's a murderer out there. <laughs> you know, it's like, and it's like, oh, all right, I'm gonna do it. All right, and it's like you run out there real quick. You get it. You stub your toe on the way back in. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't see, and then you're punching a wall. And it's like, man, I hate the dark. But as much as you hate the dark, and as much as you are afraid of the dark, I would also say this. I would say that some of us are way too comfortable in the dark. See, I, I don't know about you, but like for me, I kind of know my house pretty well now. And I know whenever things are in place and whenever they're not, and I do stub my toe, I blame my wife. And she's not here to defend herself. But I, I love you, Abby, if you're watching online. Anyway, so, but it's like, I, I know my house pretty well. But then there's sometimes that it's out of place and it catches me off guard and I do stub my toe. But I know it well enough that I can navigate through the dark without hurting myself sometimes, or at least I think so. And see, I think the same is true for a lot of us here tonight, that I would say that some of you all have gotten way too comfortable in the dark, that you can kind of navigate in the dark without thinking that you're going to hurt yourself too bad, and then before you know it, you stub your toe. (laughs) Before you know it, you mess up. Before you know it, you start having suicidal thoughts. Before you know it, you don't feel loved. Before you know it, you don't feel cared about. Before you know it, you went a lot further than you ever expected. See, because you're really way too comfortable in the dark. And as much as I'm afraid of darkness, I'm more afraid of being comfortable in the dark. See, there's actually studies done on this that If you stay in darkness, even for a short amount of time, like a couple days, complete darkness, you begin to go through mental struggles. They actually did an experiment on a group of people who went in complete darkness, but then they have one light bulb in the room, and there for a moment they would turn the light on randomly and turn it off. And they were supposed to be there for 10 weeks. And what happened was they lost sense of time. They started getting confused even about who they were, which sounds crazy to me. And they thought that they were supposed to be in there months whenever they let them out. They were like, oh, I thought I've only been in here like a week. They got so disoriented that they had no clue where they were, who they were, or what was going on. And see, I think that happens a lot of times for us, is that you're in the darkness for so long that you don't know where you are, who you are, or how long you've even been there. 
See, but there's a light. His name is Jesus. But I want us to look here, John 1, starting in verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Say light. light. The light, say light. light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, say light, so that through him all might believe. He himself, not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Do you recognize him? Do you recognize the light? See, you can say the right answer, but still not recognize him. See, my first point is this, is when you live in the light, you experience true life. Not just this life where you're trying to navigate and figure all things out, but a true life. Life that comes from him, life that comes through him, life that is only possible because of him. That's that better life that we talk about, not just for fun and not just because it sounds good, but a truly better life because of Jesus. But you must live in the light. See, it takes light for there to be life. This true life, this better life, this eternal life, that comes through Jesus, who is the light of the world. First John 1, 5 says this, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. My next point is this, is that if you don't follow Jesus, you will live in darkness. If you don't follow Jesus, you will live in darkness. And I'm not just talking about dark times or tough times because, listen, you will always experience tough times. See, we talked about it before that just because it's a better life doesn't mean that it's an easier life. No, it's hard. There's still going to be struggles. There's still going to be trials. There's still going to be tough times. There's still going to be dark times. There's still going to be shadows. There's still going to be these things, these things, but you don't live in darkness with the light of the world. See, in him, there is no darkness. So why is there darkness in your life? See, you can know about Jesus and not truly know Jesus. See, you can give the answer of, oh, who's the light? Jesus. See, you can know the answer but not live through him. What's the score? So I'm just playing, I'm just playing. See, you can know it, but not live it. So look at your life. Would you say that your life looks brighter? Better? Not easier. A real big question within it, would you say that you have hope? Man, listen, I know the world's crazy right now. I know that. And a lot of people talk about, man, oh, this world we're living in, like, it is crazy. I sound like an old man. I? It's like, oh, this world we're living in now. <laughs> but for me, see, I know the answer. And his name is Jesus. See, so instead of being afraid, Instead of being hopeless, not being able to look ahead for what Jesus may do. A lot of times we stay in the darkness, but I, I, I want you to not look at the hopelessness, but I want you to hold on to the hope, which is the light of the world, that even whenever it seems like darkness, and you may be in that shadow of the valley, 
that the only reason that there is a shadow is because there's a light and his name is Jesus. And he is the answer. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is walking through it with you. So no matter what the world may bring, no matter what the circumstances may look like, even whenever it seems hopeless, don't look to what is seen, but hold on to the truth that Jesus is the light of the world and he is always with you. See, because I truly believe that some of y'all are walking through some dark times. And like me, I think a lot of us, we're scared of the dark. But don't let your fear trump your faith, but put your faith in Jesus. See, because if you follow Jesus, you, if you don't follow Jesus, you will live in darkness. But if you follow Jesus, you will live in that light. And it's through that light you will have this true, better life. But see, what happens a lot of times it's kind of like whenever I asked earlier, right? I'm going to ask again, who's the light? One more time, who's the light? See, you know the right things, right? I mean, you're here tonight. I'm so glad you're here tonight. And maybe you show up on Sunday. I'm glad you come on Sundays. And maybe you read the Bible and maybe you'll pray whenever you need to. And it's, it's like, okay, yeah. Me, oh, me, yeah. Huh. Kind of smells that propane. Ooh. And it's like, oh, well, I'm doing, I'm doing what I'm supposed to. It ain't going to blow up on me. Come on now. <laughs> We're going to pray right now. <laughs> that does not happen. All right. <laughs> let, me, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let's see. <laughs> They're like, I'm so embarrassed for him right now. I'm so glad it's not me. What's going on? Brandon, I invited my friend, and they're seeing you do this up there. Like, I promise he's usually not this bad. Like, <laughs> I mean, come on. It's like, okay. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, I read my Bible. I pr- <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't fall off. <laughs> They'll kill me. Anyway, so it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I read my Bible. I pray. I, I go to youth. I go to church. I do all these things. Who's laughing? Calm down. You calm down. That was way too loud of a giggle. It was like trying to hold it in. Huh? <laughs> Thought it was a mouse in here for a minute. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I read my Bible. I pray. Yes, yeah, right. See, it's kind of like what we talked about, though. That, yeah, you might read your Bible. You might pray. You might be doing all the same things that you're supposed to do. And you may know about Jesus, but if you don't know Jesus unless you put the light to it, you're not going to see what it could really be. Which one does your life look like? You know all the right answers. You do all the right things. Yeah, you came here tonight. It's what you're supposed to do. But you're still in darkness. Well, I read my Bible. Well, I prayed about it. But do you know Jesus? Not just know about him. Not just doing the right things. Not just saying the right things, but do you truly know him? It's his light shining in you. Do you know Jesus? Do you know the light of the world that whenever there is darkness, that you can pick up the light and it will lead you, it will guide you, it will direct you every step of the way that it will be a lamp unto my feet?
Do you know the light? Are you on fire for Jesus? Whenever people see you, do they see Jesus inside of you? Or do you just know about him? Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, I'm supposed to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's good whenever he answers the prayers the way I want him answered. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll believe in him then. Or whenever someone's sick. But see, he stays the same. No matter what changes, he will always remain the same. And listen, hear me out, Josh. I need your help a little bit. Please, Lord. Oh, please, Lord, don't fall. <laughs> oh, it's so hot. It's not that funny. I got hurt. Like, <laughs> all right, if you want mine real quick, put it in the hallway there. Uh, actually, just that door. You can close that door. Just that door's fine. Yeah. Uh, it's locked. There we go. That's good. You can just put it out in the hallway. That's fine. You can just sit it there. Don't turn it off if you don't mind. I need it later. I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> Where'd he go? Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Give it up for Josh real quick. <laughs> Sweet. And see, a lot of times, though, it's like this. And you are hopeless. And you don't see Jesus. You don't see the light. And so you feel hopeless. You feel like he's not there. You feel like he doesn't love you. There's no way he could care about you. That he, he left me whenever that loved one passed away. Whenever that tragedy happened. No matter the circumstances. Whatever took place in your life. Whenever the storms came. Where was the light then? Brandon, you said he would never leave me nor forsake me. But see, what happens a lot of times, that light's still there, but maybe you just moved. See, bring the light back in real quick. I hope it stayed lit. You know, like, I hope. Huh. Huh. Oh, no, it didn't. Like, I don't know where you took it. I don't know what happened. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh, Josh, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, give it up for Josh. But see, the light never stopped shining. But maybe your life did. The flame never went out. Because he never changes. But maybe you walked away and you started doing the things of the world, acting like the world, living like the world. Stop hanging around the right people, doing the things you should. Before you know it, your life looks like this. No wonder you feel empty. Jesus has never, never changed. He's always right there for you. John 3, 19 through 21, it says this. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it, might, it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. 
My last point is this, is that when you live in the light, you will be set free. When you live in the light, you will be set free. John 8, 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Do you want to be set free tonight? Are you tired of having or trying to deal with everything on your own? Are you tired of acting like you have it all together? Listen, maybe you're here and you're doing all the right things. And you know all the right answers. But maybe you don't know Jesus. I'm asking you tonight, stop playing games. Get serious about Jesus. And give your life to him here tonight. He will set you free. I'm gonna ask you if you would, close your eyes and bow your heads. Do you truly know Jesus? Or do you just know about Jesus? Do you truly know him? Maybe you're here tonight and you've given your life to Jesus, but if you're being honest, you've kind of strayed away in the sense of you went left when he said go right and your life it's looked a lot like darkness and it's not because he left you but because you walked away from him. I want to encourage you, repent. Fix your eyes on him, fix your, fix your focus on him. He will lead you, guide you, direct you in the right way, down the right path. Maybe you're here tonight. Tonight you realize you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord of your life, that you've known about him. You don't have that personal relationship with him. You've known about him, but you don't truly know him. It's not personal to you. That the reason it seems like you've been in darkness is because you have been. But tonight, you can accept the light of the world. Tonight, you can have the hope of the world. Tonight, you can experience that love that only comes from Jesus. It's like we talked about at the beginning. About how he was with God, but God sent the light into the world. And he sent that light into the world. To give hope, to give peace, to give grace, to give salvation. But he paid the ultimate price of being beaten, mocked, abused. He paid that price by dying on a cross for a sinner like you and me. But three days later, he rose from the grave, defeating death and its sting and defeating darkness so we can live in the light. If tonight you're ready to surrender, 
Surrender it all to him. And give your life to Jesus. I'm gonna ask you to say this prayer with me and a prayer it won't save you. But if you believe it in your heart, you can confess it with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Just say, God, I'm sorry. God, I've messed up. God, I've sinned. God, I've made mistakes. God, I've been living in darkness. But Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe that you came. Jesus, I believe that you died. And Jesus, I believe that three days later, you rose from the grave, defeating death and its sting, defeating darkness so I could live in light. And I could have this true life. I could have this better life. Jesus, I believe. I repent. I turn from my old ways. And I turn to you. Please forgive me of my sins. I declare you as Lord of my life. If that's you, Tonight, I'm gonna ask you on the count of three, just slip up your hand just so I can be praying for you. I'm not gonna call you out. I'm not gonna embarrass you. I just wanna be praying for you. Because like I said, yes, life with Jesus is better. But it's not easier. I just wanna be praying for you to help you on your journey with Jesus. So if that was you on the count of three, if you would, just slip up your hand. One, I'm so proud of you. Two, Jesus loves you so much. And three, if that was you, would you just slip up your hand? No one looking around. I'm so proud of you. And listen, maybe you're here tonight. And you've been struggling. You've been going through some things. And you just need prayer tonight. No one's looking around, but I, I just want to be praying for you. Because listen, life is hard. There's still shadows. If you just need prayer, if you're going through something, I'm going to ask you on the count of three, just slip up your hand just so I can be praying for you. One, two, three. If that's you and you just need prayer, something in your life, something in your family's life, something you're struggling with, someone you need to forgive, something you've been holding on to, whatever it may look like, whatever it may be. I want you to know I'm praying for you. I want you to know that God's there for you. There's nothing too big, there's nothing too small for him. And just hold on to that truth. That he's defeated darkness. God, we just come to you right now and God, we just thank you. God, we just thank you just for who you are and God, for all you've done. God, we thank you that you came for us. You died for us and Jesus, that you rose again, defeating death, defeating darkness so we can have this eternal life that only comes through you. God, I pray for every single person here that, God, you would lead them, guide them, direct them every step of the way. That, God, you would help them through whatever they're going through, whatever their family is going through, whatever the struggle or circumstances may be. That, God, the situations that seem hopeless, that, God, you would bring hope. God, the situations that we don't understand, we don't get, that, God, you would bring peace, you would bring clarity, you would bring comfort. But God, we thank you so much. God, we love you. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name I ask and I pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, can we give Jesus some praise here tonight? Come on.